My name is Dorian Walker, and I'm 24 years old, a senior here at ASU, Arizona State University. I was born in Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah, stayed there until I was about four, four and a half, and then moved here to Arizona. So I am an Arizonian. So I've been here that whole time. Started off kind of on the west side. We moved a lot as a child. I kind of go to different elementary schools and ended up the longest period um, down in Mesa. Mm. That's where I was raised. So I'm kind of used to being um, a young black woman in classes where I'm the only one. So I really was the minority and was kind of not the different one, but I had to go through all the little things where it was kind of a little bit of culture clash, you know, kids want to fill my hair and just different stuff like that, you know, that you go through. But I think um, Arizona has so many opportunities and it's taught me a lot. My father is half black, half Japanese, so I have like a quarter Japanese in me. So I think it started kind of at an early age, just wanting the need for like just to have cultural inclusion and learn about different cultures and see what's out there. And I guess one day I was reading at work and actually work for um, Sheriff Joe Arpaio. I'm a detention officer in the jail, so that's bringing a whole another aspect of so many different issues, elements, where I'm here, an officer, someone who now has a woman of color with authority, you know, to tell people, they're not sentenced yet, but they have been, you know, it's kind of on the, we don't know yet if you are sentenced or guilty or not, but, um, yeah, so, I'm seeing some different sides and getting some different opinions for those who are inside of a system and those who are out. So I'm getting to see um, two different things, especially with the immigration issues that are going on here, the racial profiling of the, they call them paisas, which are in there, which are the Hispanic, the Hispanics who are from Mexico. So the Mexicans who were born in Mexico who are here, and they either are, a lot of them are in for either forgery or they don't have their documentation, so they don't have their citizenship, so they will go back. Um, so that's kind of an issue that I'm kind of, um, feel very important about um, the whole building a border. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do things and to keep people out. It's still that separation. I feel that we need to do a lot more international work. And that's what I want to do with the relationship, especially with our border. Like those are our neighbors. And there's got to be a way, if there's a reason for people, an influx coming to the U.S., there's something that's lacking over there. So definitely we need to um, get some things situated over there. So definitely international issues I'm interested in and have a passion for. Um, our own even homelessness um, problems, hunger issues on a domestic level and an international world level. I want to um, know more about uh, preventative measures for um, HIV and AIDS and other different dis diseases that may be out there and people who are just over well-being of just being kind of sick, depressed, like those type of maybe mental illnesses that um, I feel can be cured with the doctor but also through the power of the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ so to get some even ministry out there and you know just because all things doesn't have to be especially when it comes to the Holy Spirit it doesn't have to be structured so kind of whatever I do I may be doing some praying for people that you know they don't know about it and that the power of prayer it really does work so that was huge but back to um, Mi Familia Volta I was at work and we're not supposed to read newspapers but um on a little break I happened to be able to read like the it was, I think it might have been the front page of one of the newspapers it might have been the Arizona Republic actually was saying trying to get on the rise Hispanic voter population and stuff like that so I was reading it and just the enthusiasm from the words on the paper I said oh my goodness my organization here at ASU because I'm president of the Mosaic Student Union which is a multicultural and it's going to be like an umbrella organization um, since downtown is so new to make sure that we have participation and that the needs and, and resources whatever is being met for those students of color um, so that's my organization here and so this would be good for us to get involved with us. Like, Mi Familia Vota, we're not just focusing on African Americans, it's Hispanics, it's it's Asians, Latin, it's everyone else, you know what I'm saying, Native American population. So, um, with that, I contacted them, I just called them right away, I was like, I want to get involved, how can we meet, how can we set up, I want to go out there, and I just, I learned about canvassing and their whole campaign and rallies, like, this is a whole political thing that I had never even been a part of, so they introduced me to a lot of new things that are exciting and to push, and so I went out, we're in predominantly a Hispanic neighborhood. And I'm knock, 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 you know, I'm this black girl, the only one with all the other Hispanics. I'm like, I'm going to learn how to speak Espanol. Yes, like, I'm going to be fluent in it. Seriously, I just think to be able to communicate, especially with languages, will be huge. So, yeah, I called them up. They were very receptive. They got my energy over the phone. And, like, that's what we need, just positive people to come out and who are foreign issues. So we went out to the community and made sure everyone was registered. We had our registration cards so they could fill it out. Um, if they're of age, made sure that um, they even had a commitment card that says on November 4th, by signing it, that we're going to go to the polls and vote. And we're all 
also promoting um, the early mail-in ballots for the registration. So just in case to go ahead and get your votes in, mail-in and nothing else can happen on the day of, you know, just in case when you're going to go vote, something happens or excuse, no, go ahead and mail it in. So we were pushing that too. And that was really good. So I'm glad that I got to meet um, Ms. Abigail Duarte from Mi Familia Vota and um, Carlos from Mi Familia Vota. They're really good people and that was, that was cool to meet them. And just, I guess, a couple other issues, um, possibly, especially with the, the candidates that are running for president right now, the two of them, I don't know specifically exactly, I haven't researched it, which is still on me too, you know, that's just me putting my priorities together. But I felt when I heard certain candidates speak, certain ones, them, their partner, their wife, touched my heart personally. It felt like they were reaching the demographics that I want to reach to, that they want to see an improvement and a growth in that area. So that's who I base my decision on personally. That's why I know who I'm going to vote for. And I just pray and trust that whoever's getting in this leadership position, they're going to do what they say. And it'll be for a collective vote for both everyone on economic statuses that are the rich and wealthy to those who are poor, that we can all still work together collectively. And even changing our whole, I think it's an American mentality that has that whole individualistic approach, which I'm trying to get out of too because I do have to take care of me while also taking care of others. So switching from the individualistic approach to more of a collective approach and community-based, um, I guess, mission, philosophy, way of life, put it into everything that we do, you know?